Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. There you go. We've got kind of a packed schedule this morning. I know y'all are still in line to get your soup. Uh, just keep on going through the line, and I'm going to go ahead and make introductions, and we can get started. Um, today we have uh, Marietta Parrish, who is a board-certified registered dietitian, an exercise physiologist, and an endurance athlete. She graduated from Lipscomb University and completed a residency through the National Health Care Corporation. Uh, after working in clinical and community nutrition for a decade, uh, she is combining her passion for nutrition and exercise in the practice of sports nutrition. Sports nutrition is one of the fastest growing fields across the globe, and Nashville athletes have had access to a dedicated board certified sports specialist dietitian. And, uh, and she, in assuming that role, she's promoting the growth of sports nutrition. Um, she says, as a specialist in this area, I will provide safe, efficient, evidence based nutrition services that include an assessment, nutrition diagnosis, intervention counseling, and follow up evaluations. These services are available to sports organizations as well as physically active individuals and groups. And her objectives are to enhance the performance, health, and longevity of individuals for that range from the weekend warrior to the professional athlete with focus, food, and fitness. Ladies and gentlemen, Marietta Parrish. had the pleasure of meeting many of you before and it's great to see everyone here again today safely here on the the roads that are cleared so well uh, so thanks for coming in I think as cold as it is you heard soup and we all ran to come evidently which is nice um, so this we're starting a new year and a lot of people are focused on what they're eating come January 1 after we've all indulged our way through from October till about now. Um, and as cold as it is, it's easy to continue to indulge, but still, hopefully some of us are redoubling our efforts to focus on moving more and eating better. That's not a new topic, um, but today we're gonna kind of talk about um, in your efforts to focus on your nutrition, what can we do to make it easier? What can we do to simplify it? And specifically, what can we do in your home to simplify it? So it's not new news, and it's a subject we've talked about before here. The more you cook at home, the more you eat at home, the more likely you are to achieve your dietary goals, not only just your own personal dietary goals, but the dietary guidelines set forth um, in our country for optimal health. So again, that's not new news, and you know it, and you're like, sure, sure, eat more at home, eat less out, um, but it's not that easy. The best intentions are easily foiled by everyday life. Um, so we're going to kind of talk today about what can we do to make that more practical. And I have ideas, but more so I know each of you have ideas, and what seems easy to me or clicks for me may seem ridiculous to you. So I think it's going to be really helpful as we go through this if we jump in and share our ideas with each other, because you never know what somebody sitting in the room is going to say, oh man, yeah, I could do that. That would really work for me, opposed to... Um, ideas that I have and what works for me. So we're all different. Different ideas work for different people and hopefully we can share those today. But the end goal would be what can we do to eat more at home? Hopefully you've set up goals for yourself. The average American eats out at least three times a week. Um, which may not seem like a lot but it certainly um, cost more than it, it would if you were making that food and it especially costs more for your health if you're dining out compared to if you made that food at home. 
Um, so we really want to focus on trying to minimize that. Hopefully you've set your own goal for yourself on how much you're going to dine out every week. Um, that's certainly something, again, that's going to help your budget, but also help your health. So try to, if you haven't set a number in your mind, set it. It's going to help you at least be more aware. It's easy to get in the habit um, when you're swinging home to stop by and pick something up or not to prepare something to bring into lunch and just go out and pick something up. That's an easy habit to get into. And it seems like it may be working for you only to get six months or a year down the line and say, ah, huh, I'm not where I want to be, whether it's financially or health-wise or et cetera. And certainly that can be attributed to your dining out. That's, again, unrefutable evidence. Even when you're trying to make the healthiest choice, um, if any of you have gone into, say, somewhere you feel better about stopping by, like maybe a Panera, it seems like people feel better about eating there compared to eating at McDonald's. There's nothing wrong with McDonald's, but in our society, for some reason, we've shamed ourselves if we're eating there, and we feel good about ourselves if we're eating at Panera. The point is, um, specifically, more so at Panera compared to McDonald's, is they're very including McDonald's though now, forthright with their nutritional information. Have any of y'all started to pay attention to that information they post when you dine out? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, research shows that it, it might affect your decision initially, but long term it kind of doesn't. You, you typically go in and still get whatever your favorites are. But if you are starting to pay attention to it, and it is something new, you're at that initial stage, you may be sitting there looking at the calories, and if that means anything to you, you're like, great, I can get half of a sandwich and a cup of soup at Panera, which might get me through the next hour of the day, and stick to my dietary allowance. Hmm. Yeah. So, and that's Panera, right? That's the, that's the good choice that we feel good about. It's not even McDonald's right? So it's easier, again, that just emphasizes if we will put more time and effort, time, yes, and effort, into our food prep at home, um, we're going to be more satisfied by our food and it's going to be a lot easier to meet our health guidelines. Um, and research really just supports that's because when you're at home, as it says, take control, you have more control about what's going into your food. So let's talk about how to do that um, control. So there's three things we're really going to focus on today, plan, prepare, enjoy. And the enjoy, I don't think you need so much help with, so we won't really spend time on that one. Um, but more so talking about planning and preparing, because that's what it's all about. We all know as we get into the planning, sorry, this is a little sensitive. When we get into the planning part, um, that takes time. And that's where most of us fail is when we get to the planning part. Um, as the previous side, you've heard the, the old maxim, if you failure to plan is planning to fail. Well, it, it is. We know that. It's true. Um, so setting aside time to plan each week is important. Now, this looks different for everyone. You don't have to sit there and have a calendar like this one where you say Monday is what I have for breakfast and Tuesday. I mean, a lot of us are creatures of habit, so it's easy to get into routines. It's, you know, I usually have one or two breakfasts. I usually have a couple of lunch options I like. And most of us get our most variety at dinner time. That's fairly typical for most people. So it doesn't have to look as involved as, as this kind of calendar that we have um, up on the screen. But it does take some time. For some of you th that may be um, more type A, you may need more time to plan because you really want to get all the details in there. Um, for some of you that may be a personality closer to a C, you may not need quite as much time, um, which, which is good. Um, your kitchen ability is going to determine how much time you need to plan. If you're very comfortable in the kitchen and in the grocery store and putting meals together, this may be something really simple for you. For others, it may seem like this is the whole thing getting in the way is trying to plan, I don't know what to eat. You know, that, that may be the whole issue that's really preventing you from cooking more at home. Um, so there are a lot of websites available to you or apps that are available to you to help you with this. And some of you may want to go this route. So I just want to run through some that are particularly helpful if you are that type of person that really likes to get things organized, if you're electronic, if you're trying to, um, if this helps you, <laughs> We're going to walk through some of the more popular ones. The first one is Eat This Much. Has anyone used this one before, this particular app? OK, you can get this app on your phone. Um, some of these are free. Some of them there's a fee for. Um, I Eat This Much, it, uh, you, 
not only can you plug in your specific dietary goals, so if you have a particular calorie amount or if you have certain food restrictions or certain things you're trying to avoid, you can put that in. It's going to help you generate recipes. You can also add in your own recipes. If you have grandma's favorite enchiladas, that's fine. They can go right in there, um, and, and it's really easy to do that. They will show you what your macro and micronutrient breakout is for that day, so it calculates all that no matter what the recipes are. Um, and it also puts it according to a budget cost. So then it, you can either use one of their generated menus or you can generate your own drag and drop and create your own menu and then it will generate a grocery shopping list. And this one, this website takes it a step further. If you want to use grocery delivery, which we'll talk about, or grocery pickup, it will actually put the order in on whatever service you're going to use. So this is kind of a one-stop shop. It's going to help you with your nutrition. It's going to help you with your meal planning. It's going to help you with your grocery list. It can even order the groceries. So this is a pretty comprehensive option. If, again, that's you, you really want to be really planned, this is one that you might want to check into. Um, plan to eat. This one is really user friendly. That's why it gets a lot of the props. Um, it, it's a drag and drop. So if you have something on a, a screen or saved or from another website that you really like, you can just drag the recipe and drop it into your menu. Um, so it's you really user friendly. Um, and again, it's an app for the phone. Um, and it does, does it, it does some nutrition stuff, but not as much as the, pr the previous one. But it certainly does a grocery list for you. Um, eating well, this is one that I've mentioned when I've come before that I really like. And this one um, doesn't give weird recipes. It, it, again, it, it adheres to all of your dietary concerns, whether it's calorie amount. The, the great thing about this one is it will allow you to generate menus, whatever your specifications are. So if your specifications are, I want 30 minute meals it will give you whole menus that are based on 30 minute meals. If you want a whole menu that's based on recipes that have five or less ingredients, it will do that. So <laughs> it allows you to really get specific um, with what you want and um, it uses all whole food. It doesn't use a lot of weird recipe or weird ingredients. You know how that happens sometimes. Um, so this is one that I really recommend. It also will um, give you a budget. You can give it a budget, and it's going to help you with that, and it's going to tell you about how much you're spending. Um, so this is a really um, comprehensive website that I like as well that's going to help generate, again, menus according to your needs or deadlines. Again, if in January some people are thinking about following a certain you know, diet, these websites are good because you can put in whatever it is you're trying to follow or stick to. And if you don't know what to eat, it will tell you. And then it's really easy. It, it, you know, a lot of these search engines um, follow your user preferences and they optimize what they're going to suggest for you. So they learn what you like and then they try to suggest um, recipes or foods that are going to fit that. Um, so this is another really good option I'd recommend. Big oven. So what I like about this particular website is it's really good for using leftovers. So let's say you're in your house and you're like, I got three random things and I don't want to throw them out. They're going to go bad soon. I don't know what to do with them. These are the most random things. I have green olives, you know, whatever it is. And you're going, what can I do with marmalade green olives? And, you know, I need something I can make out of this. Um, I don't want to run out to the store. I want to make something. Well, you can put it in here. You can put ingredients in there and say, this is what I have, and it will tell you recipes that or things that you can make out of it. So I really like that they um, do that. They also, if you have leftovers, it will tell you how you can repurpose them, so it will shoot out ideas. So if you're like, I have um, two extra pounds of Cajun chicken, what can I do with that? It will show you three other ways. You can repurpose them. You can, you can make those uh, Cajun chicken into you know, sandwiches or whatever else, pot pies or whatever you want to make. Um, so that's a really cool feature that Big Oven offers. It also will do your menu planning. It also has drag and drop where you can add your own recipes or use the recipes on the site. Um, again, it does dietary restrictions and it also will generate the grocery list and um, will give you, you can do budgeting with that too. It tells you how much things will cost um, and it will locate stores and tell you what the weekly price is on that item if that's something you want to do. So, I mean, there's, if you're a planner, no reason um, not to take advantage of this technology. You can use a whiteboard at home still if that's your style or your, or your calendar, but there's a lot of great technology to help you. Um, the final one I have to talk to you about is clean eating. 
this one um, is a magazine and they also have a website but they really focus on batch cooking so they're one of their main focuses monthly in their magazine is um, they always offer you a week of menus and um, it all involves healthy hacks so it's all how can you spend you know an hour or two on Sunday if that's your day and how can you knock out all your recipes for the week and so it does it for you it gives you a week it talks about how to organize your time what you need to do grocery list everything it provides everything you need and so they offer that in the magazine but you can also get it online um, and they'd even take it a step further besides offering that because of course if you're just using what they have in that magazine you're getting some odd recipes I can attest to that but um, if you they offer classes so they have clean cooking Academy 101 and they teach you if you're like I really want to get into this I really want to learn how to like batch cook and organize my week and um, and that's something that doesn't come natural to you well they offer a course that you can sign up and do that and they have dietitians and chefs and they they walk through how you can do it at home so that's a really great resource um, as well as clean eating so this brings us to what we were just talking about. Anytime that you're planning ahead and you're trying to cook at home, it means you have to have the stuff on hand. You have to actually have materials on hand to eat or use or cook with when you're at home. So two of the services here in Hendersonville that um, you can take advantage of are the Click List at Kroger or the Walmart grocery delivery. So both of these are ones that you can order online from your computer at your desk or in wherever you are on your phone. And um, then you can just say when you want to pick them up and you go and your groceries are there and you're literally just driving up to the storefront and you're getting your groceries and you're on your way. Has anyone taken advantage of any of these services yet? You have any w thoughts about them or words? Find them. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you had to mess up one time, but they made it worth it. <laughs> it sounds like. So, yeah, it's exactly what it says it is, and so I'm glad to hear you, uh, you know, affirm that. Yeah, it's exactly what it says it is. You pull up, you get your groceries, and it really makes it easier. And I love that you highlighted that it cuts out the impulse buying, um, which can go a long way for your budget, but also for your health. Um, we all know don't go to the store hungry and on and on and on, but inevitably you get in that store and they have these, these sirens, these sexy food kiosks that are calling your name, and you're like, that looks delicious. You know, I saw the commercial for that I'm getting it or it's on sale and you're like I can't afford not to buy this cereal it's so it's cheap you know and you and you put it in your basket so yeah I really like this feature um, when I lived outside of the country over a decade ago I, this is how we did our shopping you ordered online and they came and they delivered it it was just really normal and I I used it and it was really great I mean I actually kind of missed because I like to be sold on food I like to go look at things in the store and take my time but let me just be real that's not most of us most of us do not enjoy grocery shopping like I do um, but th this is a great service it is the way that we're moving towards in our country um, so I encourage you to take advantage of it, it, it again if you use all the other technology kind of stuff where you're planning your menu or you're trying to get things together, this really is a huge time saver. This is a time saver even if you don't use any of the other websites, especially because we are creatures of habits. Our grocery list tends to have a lot of the same things on it. If you have favorite yogurts or milk or whatever, you tend to buy a lot of the same things every week. Well, guess what? It can save that. And so it makes it really easy to go, I'll just add a few extra things on my list and then you're your grocery orders generated so it's not real time consuming every week you have to go re-put everything in your basket initially you may have to find some of your favorites and get it set up but it really does save time in the long run um, if you take advantage of it and again you're just pulling up picking up your groceries this is especially great if you have any moms that have kids and you're like the last thing I want to do is have 20 tantrums and fights over things they're going to put in in the grocery cart well 
This is a really great, easy way to avoid it. So this is one um, really quick time-saving option to make sure you, st you have stuff on hand. Um, I really encourage you not only to use this for your weekly shopping, but go ahead and if you're really committed to trying to cook more at home, you need to build up your pantry and keep a lot of staples at home. Okay, so, you know, go ahead in that pantry if you have the room and you have the budget, or at least you can add on something every week until you build up your pantry, but you can add on an extra box of whole grain noodles, making sure that you keep a bag of rice in there, making sure that you're having um, a thing of canned tomatoes or canned tuna. There's just a lot of things that you can keep on hand, whether it's in the pantry or in the freezer, um, that you can build up. And that way, when maybe you haven't planned or you're not as together as you want to be, you know you can go home and there's always something that you can pull together really quickly if you're trying to avoid eating out if you're really committed to that um, so again really encourage you to take advantage of this and right here in Hendersonville it's offered um, at two grocery stores so let's move into I want to say one thing at last thing about planning um, before we move into prepare so with the planning if something's at home when you get home and you don't have to think about it if it's already ready it's not going to involve much thought or effort you're likely to do it if you're going to have to think about it and put more time into it when you get home it's not going to happen so planning is really the key yes prep work which we're moving into is kind of the next step but again you're going to hear this at the end really if you do a little bit of planning and prep it's going to make it easy to stick to your goals you're not going to need a lot of too many tricks so the tricks really at the end you're going to see is just taking a little bit of time to plan and prep ahead of time you're more likely to do it if you do it before you get home the less you have to do when you get home the more likely you are to be successful so that's really where we move into prep um, and again if this is something new to you to prepare meals it takes a lot of time one thing um, with my um, professional hockey athletes I work with so I'm the dietitian for the Nashville Predators and one of the things that I work with on the guys we get them from when they're really young you know and we draft them and hopefully we keep in the organization for years like a, a Roman Yossi who's the captain of the team well he's been in our organization for years <laughs> you know seven or eight years then this might be his eighth a long time um, almost as long as Pekka and I've seen him evolve and mature, of course, because we got him when he was like a baby. <laughs> he still is. Um, but one of the things I'm super excited about is he's like, oh, yeah, we cook at home. And he invites the new guys when they're changed or traded or whatever. Or they come to the team. He invites them over to eat at his house, and he cooks for them. How cool is that? I mean, these guys could have personal chefs. Of course they could. But we spent time before they made it into the big money teaching them how to prepare food at home, and they prefer that. They prefer that. So even with their schedule where they play a game every other night of the season, right? I mean, you're talking about nothing short of baseball and maybe basketball come close to such a demanding time schedule. They make it a priority when they're home, when they're in town, they cook, and they love to do it. It doesn't start out easy this way, but like I said, we spend years before they get to this level trying to make it easy. And so one thing they do is we, they practice. We really talk about in their off-season, a lot of them, their goal is when they're younger is I want you to find three recipes that you make at least five times, each recipe, that you make at least five times this summer during your off-season so that when the season begins, you got it down. It's like, all right, I'll throw, throw that together and it's no problem, right? So if you're making a new recipe and you're keeping them to look at the instructions and what do I do and how do I do that and what does that mean, it's going to take you forever and you're going to be frustrated. But if it's something that you've done and you can, it's really quick to throw together. So practice makes perfect, as you hear, and that's really the key part of making things quicker or easier is you're going to have to get in there and find some recipes that you're comfortable with. And maybe your goal is we'll eat similar things, but I'll try one new recipe a month or, or whatever it is. And our guys, that's a lot of their goals is I'll say, okay, your goal is I want you to try one new recipe this month. And I send them a recipe so that we gradually build the repertoire of what they can cook so when they get to a level like a like a Roman Yossi and even though he's the captain of the team he's like yeah I'm cooking at home and I'm cooking for my teammates I mean how cool is that right and if they can do it you can do it I assure you because they're pretty busy pretty busy guys as well um, and have a lot of demands so practice makes perfect the more you do it the easier it's going to get the first thing you have to talk about when you prepare is when am I going to do this 
is it going to be a weekend? Is it going to be after dinner? Am I going to spend time after I get everyone to bed and, and instead of watching TV, am I going to take that 30 minutes or an hour that I normally would watch TV and try to prep lunches or, or dinner for the next night or whatever it is? You got to decide what works for you. Is it bi-weekly or monthly? You say, I'm just going to do a big batch of stuff, portion it out and freeze it. I got a deep freeze and we're just going to get it all ready. You got to find what works for you. Everyone's different. Everyone's going to find that time. But the thing is, you've got to think through, when could I realistically devote this time consistently to preparing food? Because it is going to take some prep time. Um, so batch cooking, when you get into batch cooking, batch cooking doesn't mean that you're making necessarily huge quantities of foods. It can be that every night you're making one extra piece of meat, all right, so it, or whatever, one extra portion of au gratin potatoes. So batch cooking doesn't have to necessarily be huge batches. It can be, but it can be just one extra serving. That's going to save time. Obviously, you can take the leftovers for lunch tomorrow. You can take that extra piece of meat or the extra half um, you know, pan of au gratin potatoes, and again, you can freeze it. You can reuse it. If you're um, doing chicken breast and you're saying, I'm going to cook chick, six, six chicken breast and I'm going to do two with teriyaki seasoning, two with Cajun seasoning, and two with Mediterranean seasoning, and I'm going to, you know, use them. You can go ahead and freeze them that way and they're easy to pull out, or um, you can just eat them that week if you're really into chicken. <laughs> so, um, but the goal is, again, batch cooking doesn't have to be huge as far as quantity wise. It can be small. It can be one extra piece of something or one extra serving of something. Um, but that's going to build up, especially if you say for the next month, I'm going to make one extra serving and freeze it. Well, if you're consistent with that, next month, you have a whole freezer full of little meals you can pull out or little things that you can make up. So you, sometimes it takes some time to build up stock if you're going to go the slower route, but it really pays off if you do that. Um, does anyone do batch cooking? While we're talking about it, is, is anyone in the habit of saying, I'm going to get there and cook a lot of stuff? Okay, so nobody is. What do you, you are? And we mentioned that. We were talking before you came in. You do that with soups in particular, and you have a freezer, and you use it. Can you say anything about how that helps you? One pot meals. Yeah, and the, and of course the one pot meals are always going to freeze really well, um, which is great. Yeah, and that's really um, common these days. Are the are like bowls, you know, where you can change it up. You can do your rice, but yeah. That's, that's exactly right. So do you find, do you try to set aside certain time or is it just every now and then you knock several what recipe out or are you scheduled about it? Okay, so you just take the, right, and that works really well. I'm glad you say that because there's a lot of people that are like, I don't do leftovers. I'm not one of those people. I'm happy to have leftovers, <laughs> but some people don't. So it's easier if you say, I'll just go ahead and freeze it out and I'll think about it. I don't have to eat it for two more weeks, but then it's, it's there. I'm building my stockpile. Good. Okay, so some people don't batch cook. Some people are like, well, I, I don't really batch cook, but sometimes I have an extra serving and I just portion it out and freeze it instead of expect to eat it in two days. Because some of us that leave it in your fridge, you might not eat it in two days. You might end up throwing it in the trash. It'd be wiser if you just go ahead and package it up and put it in the freezer. So one key to that is going to be, of course, having the right containers on hand, whether that's gallon Ziploc bags. That's one thing I always keep. Um, freezer bags, you know, in the quart size. And then I always have, you know, Tupperware ones that I can freeze. So that's a small investment, but it's nice to have that on hand. So if I do have leftovers, I can just say, put them in there and freeze it. Um, that's another thing that, let's say you do have leftovers on hand and you just haven't got around to eating it for this, that, or the other reason, is instead of throwing them out, package them up and put them in the freezer. It's something that's really going to help you. So if you haven't gotten the, the hint, you know, the freezer is really your friend. Um, if you think like, oh, I would never use it, you know, like I know when I was trying to get a deep freeze, my husband was like, why do we need a deep freeze? I'm like, we do, just trust me on this. Um, and when we got it, and he thought that's weird, who's going to eat frozen food? But once I started stocking it up and we had all this, he left it. He was like, this is great. It's like going to a restaurant because I can open it and be like, oh, 
I can have this soup or I can have this, you know, whatever it is, meat, stew, et cetera. And I have uncooked meat and I have cooked meat in there. So it can go both ways. And I love going to the store now, um, as we'll get in talking in a minute, and they have so many meats that are already individually packed as well. So freezer's your friend. It really um, does help out. Okay, so we mentioned this earlier moving forward, and I want to be sensitive to time here. I'm talking about repurposing leftovers or cooking one way, cooking that, you know, like I said earlier, the Cajun chicken breast and saying, what are three other ways I can turn this into? So that's one way you can really save time is to repurpose your leftovers. Take something that you've cooked and give it new life. Just, you know, use it in a new way um, for other meals. And there, you can go back and look at the slide. You'll have the presentation, of course. Um, and you can look more closely at these tools that will help you learn how to do that. Um, one way, if you have leftover fruit, you didn't eat all of it, or, or especially if you have kids and they didn't eat all of something and you're having bits of stuff, is that you can put it into a soup. You can put it into a smoothie. There's all different ways that you can quickly use um, leftovers. So that's something that's going to really save you time is taking more advantage of your leftovers and giving them new life, especially if you have people that don't eat leftovers. Okay, so veggies seem to be the time suckers. That seems to be what I hear from most people that they're like, oh, dinner takes so much time. They usually don't mean the meat. Okay. Most people are like, I can put a piece of meat in a pan and cook it or in the oven, whatever. And they, they feel okay about that. I usually hear it when it comes to vegetables. They're not eating their produce because they're like, oh, it takes so much time. You got to wash them, cut them, et cetera. So this is the area that probably you're going to spend more time trying to plan or prep ahead of time. All right, this is where you would save time investing, particularly if um, you want to get a food processor or a mandolin or some of these tools, a spiralizer, anything like that. This is where you're going to save time. Get those things and crank them down. I, I mean, if I want to shred cheese or I want to make a coleslaw, yeah, my food processor does, processor does it in about 30 seconds. You can be a person that gets kitchen gadgets and you're like, I never use them, they just sit on my shelf. But if you get them and you actually practice using them, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I can make, a, you know, a great coleslaw in less than five minutes, literally, even with the homemade dressing. And, and it doesn't take any time at all. Um, but sometimes some of these extra tools like a food processor are going to be key to helping you do that. So um, it may be something you want to look into. But again, your vegetables are going to be what's going to take time. So when you're looking at your recipes or what you're going to eat for that week, it may be really smart to go ahead and chop those vegetables and put them in what they call monkey bowls or little Tupperware containers so that when you get home, all you're doing is dumping all the stuff you've chopped up. If you're not using frozen, and again, frozen really helps, but if you're not using frozen or you're not buying stuff that's already been cut up at the store, if you're trying to really cut up your own butternut squash or your own carrots, if that's what you're doing, um, good for you, you may want to do it ahead of time. And that way when you get home, you're just dumping it into the recipe, the bowls, you know, into the recipe. So this is where you probably want to plan time is look through what you want to eat that week. Be intentional if you want to include produce. It does take time. You're not going to eat it if it's going to take time. So this is probably where your most prep and planning work needs to occur, is looking into your produce. Um, if you have cut up vegetables, even if you don't know what you want to make out of it, but if you go ahead and buy some and go ahead when you get home from the store, cut them up into different ways and have them ready, you're more likely to throw it into an omelet if you're making eggs, or more likely to throw it into whatever, like I said, a smoothie or anything else, a stir fry, just because it's there. It's easy to, or salad, it's easy just to throw in and um, have ready. Okay, so meal kits, some of you, have any of y'all used the meal kits that you can buy, like Blue Apron or any of the other ones that you can get in the mail? Has anyone tried that? Okay, so they're nice just because everything's right there and you're not having to think about what you're going to make. Your um, recipe's there and all your ingredients and they're already portioned out, so you're just dumping them together. They still do take about a full 30 minutes. Um, and it would still take that much time if you made your homemade meal kits, but it does cut your time in half. So if you can see like the example of the chicken enchiladas, all they did was they, they took a box and maybe they did it that morning or maybe they did it the night before, maybe you did it the week before, and they went ahead and put the recipe there and then they put everything they needed, you know, barring the cold chicken, um, that they needed to make that recipe. So they had their milk, their seasoning packet, their canned tomatoes, and it's just all sitting there already collected together. That saves a lot of time. So again, you can do that the night before or the week before, but actually looking at what I want to make and setting it aside. This is especially helpful if you're like, you're tempted on the way home from work not to, to go pick something else up. If you have it set out on your counter for when you get home, 
and everything's right there and it's a matter of open dump dump you know you're more likely to do it so making your own meal kits at home is something that's really going to help you stay on top of things it does take organization but it doesn't take that much time um, to get it together and then packaging it up okay so you can do a lot of people the mason jars are really popular you can do your overnight oats you can do smoothies so that way everything you want and if you're trying to do green smoothies on the way out the door and you say I don't have time for breakfast if it's everything's together and all you have to do is dump it in the blender so in other words if you make five jars that week and you're like this morning I'm gonna have this smoothie and next morning this one and all you're doing is dumping in the blender and pressing blend it takes you 30 seconds and then you have it ready to go. You can even pour the smoothie right back in the mason jar and take it with you if you want to work or, or in the car. Um, so you can do that with smoothies. Of course, salads, you can lay your salads. You just keep the dressing off to the side um, and add it later. Um, you can do it with soups where everything's layered. That's what's in the middle. And all you're doing is adding hot water when you get to work. And it's, um, you let it put the top on, let it sit two minutes, and then you have a fresh soup. So mason jar packaging up is really popular for helping you um, kind of get your lunches organized or your dinners organized ahead of time. I really like the hobo foil dinner packets. That's where you take um, parchment paper lined with foil and then you're setting everything in there ahead of time. So you can do your corn cobs, you can do your beef, you can do your onion. It goes back to what Shelly was saying, which is kind of the one pot thing. Um, this is the same thing. They're, they're dinner packets, but you just kind of put all your vegetables, your meat, whatever, your grain in there um, and fold it up and then you just set them in Tupperware. You can have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, or one for each family member. And then when you get home, you just pop them in the oven. And they cook, um, and they're ready. Um, this is probably one of the key things that I think is one of the best time savers. Um, I get all my meats. You can see on the top right, there's Sea Cuisine. That's a brand name, and you can get that at most grocery stores. And it's your ideally should have fish at least two times a week. And I really like theirs because they encourage you to cook it straight from the freezer. So it's individually frozen. You get at least two pieces per container. They average about $3 per serving, two to $3 per serving, which can be high. They're already seasoned and flavored. You're just, the most time it takes is putting in the oven. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to cook and it's ready, um, which is great. So you don't even have to think about that ahead of time, it just, except having it in your freezer. But you can do that with any meat. As long as you have it individually packed, and again, you can go to the store and when you get home, go ahead and wrap each one in serve and wrap and put it in a freezer bag. Or you can buy the chicken breasts that already come individually wrapped. But any meat, it doesn't matter, you can cook from frozen. The key is really making sure it's not very thick, okay? So really, you want like something that's not more than about an inch thick cut. But if you get that, you don't have to be like, oh, I didn't set it out the night before and thaw it. You can put it straight into the freezer, usually at 375 to 400, the oven preheated. Um, you put it in there, and most meats are going to be ready in 15 to, to 25 minutes, depending on what it is. And you can just take that pork chopper, whatever it is, and sprinkle a little seasoning on it or just put olive oil and salt and pepper on there, whatever you want to do, and cook it right away. So that, again, the freezer is really your friend. I love, too, that you can get a lot of these grains if you're like, I want... Um, you know, perfectly cooked rice that takes 30 minutes, et cetera. Well, you can buy it frozen, and it just makes it really heating. Add a little broth and just heat it up, and it's going to save you a lot of time as far as making those go. Of course, if you have an Instapot, which, um, you know, we're talking about some of these gadgets on the next one, those do make it easy because you can cook frozen meat. You can cook any kind of meat, any kind of grain very, very quickly, um, and you can throw it all in in one pot, and that's really going to help, especially with the Instapot. If you're organizing ahead of time, you can also use your slow cooker, but even that usually requires a little bit of um, braising or, or um, sorry, searing ahead of time, um, whereas your Instapot doesn't. Um, but there are a lot of different gadgets. The mandolin's there. A good knife is one of the best investments you can do to save time. If you don't have a sharp knife and you're like, it takes me forever to cut up things, a lot of times if you have the right knife, even if you don't have good knife skills, if it's sharp, if it's a decent knife, you're like, wow, it took me less than 45 seconds to cut up this butternut squash, those big squashes, you know, that are hard. A good knife makes all the difference. I, I mean, and I run into this over and over again with people. They're saying, oh, it takes me forever to cut this. And I'm like, use my knife, cut this. And they're like, wow, that was so much easier. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, you know. So sometimes the best gadget time saver is a good knife. Um, a sous vide's up there. That's something I have. It is a big investment, um, but it does save me time. I can put my meat in there two or three days ahead. 
this is no lie. And it's cooking. I just set it off to the side on the counter, you know, or in the corner, um, and it's cooking. And literally two to three days ahead, I just put it in there. So you can load that thing up, and you can put, you know, different meats in there seasoned away if you want to invest in it. Um, and it's great. And you have amazing tender meat every night when you come home if you want to do that. Again, it's all in what works for you. So when we talk about planning and prep, um, I appreciate quickly if anyone has anything they want to add that's really been helpful for them as far as saving time or staying on top of trying to prepare your own food um, at home and avoid going out. Does anyone have any tips that they can share or offer that's really helped them? If they look gross. That's funny. It really depends on which fruit or vegetable it is, right? Like if it's an avocado, the only way is to get plaster crap that's directly on the face of the avocado on the green. Oh, so use, yeah, you actually use that. Yeah. So it's real. I mean, but usually, um, so another one thing is going to, if you have, is going to be if you buy a Tupperware or a container that's meant to control the moisture in it. That makes a difference. It's usually not a big investment. I'm talking like $20 and you get a whole set. So if you're like, I would do, I like to chop things ahead of time, then you may want to invest in um, the Tupperware that's made for that, that's going to do moisture. Because it has everything to do with moisture control. So it doesn't get limp or it doesn't get white on it. Or, I mean, I know what you're saying. Like even if your carrot you cut ahead of time, you're like, oh, what is that? Yeah. Um, so really that's a good investment is to say, okay, let me go ahead and buy some of these containers that um, are made for this. Um, so that's a good question, but it also gets really dependent on what you're chopping up. There's some stuff I won't chop more than a night ahead. Um, so it depends what it is. Any other questions or tips that y'all can share with each other? All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. I know we used our, our time. If you do have questions, I am up here and I'm happy to answer them for you.